Hi, I'm going to talk about the six basic strokes that every drummer should know. I usually teach these to beginning students on their first or second lesson, even though we don't use a lot of these strokes until a couple months into the lessons. There's a couple of them that we do use for the first few months, but um, it's really good to just go ahead and plant the seeds and getting the full awareness of how to do some of these different strokes and knowing where your sticks are and how to get your hands to move to know you know where the tip of your sticks always are. Um, just to get on the same page, the tips of the sticks are friends. They like to live here about 8 to 10 inches above the head and they want to hit the same spot. They're going to the same place and then coming back up. And this is what we call full stroke. It's the first stroke that we like to learn and it's a lot of what we practice for the first you know, year of playing. So this is a full stroke. If we go down and take this down to where two or three inches above the head, we do what's called a tap. So full strokes and then taps. Full stroke, tap. So that's a good exercise to do some full strokes and taps back and forth. Just works on those first two. Then we have some that will go in between. Say we're up and we want to go and end up down, we have what's called a downstroke. It starts about 8 to 10 inches and ends about 2 to 3 inches after striking the surface. And then we can bring it up like that to practice. Downstroke, 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 downstroke. The opposite would be an upstroke. We start down, then we end up after striking the surface. Up, up. And then we bring them down on the elevator. Up. Just practicing some upstrokes. So if we take those first four strokes together, we're going to do full, full, down, down, tap, tap, up, up. That makes sense? So we do two of each, and then we do two fulls, and then we do two downs, two taps, and then two ups. Maybe let's try it together. We'll do it like we're in a mirror. So this is our right hand. This is our left hand. You can play along with me. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do it four times. Full, full, down, down, tap, tap, up, up. Ready, go. Full, full, down, down, tap, tap, up, up. Full, full, down, down, tap, tap. And so for an extra little bonus that isn't one of these six basic strokes, I want to show you guys a flam, which is doing a downstroke and an upstroke at the same time. But the upstroke is going to hit slightly before the downstroke. This is one of the basic drum rudiments. And I just decided to show it here just so you can kind of see what we use these for. The fifth basic stroke that I like to call is the non-existent stroke, or actually that's the sixth stroke. I'll get to that in a second. What I like to call the buzz stroke, the press stroke, or the multiple bounce. And it starts up, and then you want to let the tips just sit there and bounce as much as possible like this. The way to do that is because if you just drop the stick, it has one big bounce, and then the bounces are kind of slow and they speed up as they get there. We want to stop that big bounce and the slow bounces and go straight to the fast ones. So a good way to do that is to physically pull up the back end of the stick. and that, You can pull it up with your fingers back here, your, a lot of times your ring finger. You can also tighten your fulcrum a little bit, which is right where you pinch it between the index and thumb. So this is the multiple bounce. And a good exercise to practice this one is to do it, see how long you can get it, and then start the next hand. And then you can start to speed it up and get them to start overlapping to 
to get what we call a buzz roll or a press roll. You just want, it's like it's tearing silk or someone's opening the curtains. And then now we get to one of my favorite strokes, which is the six basic stroke, I like to call it. And it's the non-existent stroke. It starts kind of like the full stroke, up at about eight to ten inches, and the tips are together, and it sounds like this. Yeah. Silence is the sound of the non-existent stroke. It's stillness. Half of learning when to play is learning when not to play. Half of learning what to play is learning what not to play. Without silence, we can't have music. It just turns into noise. It's like taking some colors or a black pen and just coloring over a whole piece of white canvas. Without any of that white left, you don't have the contour and the contrast to really mess with the, the aesthetic aspect of how you're shaping the time through music or shaping the art through your eyes view. So again, just really knowing that when you play silence, it's called a rest in music, but really I like to think of it as playing silence because you're not resting and uh, thinking about what's for dinner or scratching yourself, you know, you're just, you're sitting there, you're in the music still and you're just choosing to play silence. And sometimes as a percussionist, we choose to play silence for a whole song. It's called tacitine. And that sometimes is the most musical thing, is to just play silence. And um, in this busy society where we want to be playing and making a bunch of noise and really playing the drums all the time, um, a lot of drummers forget when they're just learning to really realize that playing silence is a very musical thing and it is one of the basic strokes. So just to review, full stroke, down stroke, tap, upstroke, the buzz, the non-existent stroke, and then we had the extra stroke which we had the flams. I think these exercises and knowing these strokes are really important especially at the beginning age and um, if you've been playing for a while it's great to be able to go back and review these because having always knowing where the tips of our sticks are and being in control of our sticks is really in essence what drumming is about um, besides grooving and playing some funky rhythms. I hope this helps you um, get control of your sticks. I hope you're having a great day.